This is Bill Plant in Washington. CBS News correspondent Randall Pinkston is in Haiti one year after the devastating earthquake. Randall, tell us a little bit about where the relief efforts stand one year on. Well, Bill, to put it simply, there is still a lot of work and many years ahead before Haiti even begins to get back to where it was. And keep in mind that where it was was not in a good place. Haiti, before the earthquake, was the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. A lot of poverty here. People existing, 50% of the population existing on $2 a day. They are worse off than that now. So coming back will take a long time. About relief. Uh, millions, billions of dollars were raised uh, on behalf of Haitian earthquake victims, uh, NGOs, non-government organizations, humanitarian organizations. The Haitian government, uh, for example, is, uh, is having difficulty. There, there's a big political fight going on over the election. Uh, the government institutions, 27 of 29 ministries were destroyed. Uh, so there are some problems funneling the aid to the people who need it. Right now, Depending on whose estimate you believe, you have anywhere from 800,000 to 1.2 million people still in tents. Wow. Now, that's better than it was a year ago, but obviously uh, nowhere near uh, the kind of picture you'd like to see. And the reconstruction is hardly uh, progressing at all, we understand. Uh, and the rubble, the piles of rubble generated by that quake have really not been cleared up in most places, right? Again, depending on whose estimates you believe, you have anywhere from 5% to 20% of the rubble that has been cleared. Now, we must say that the streets, thankfully, are passable. Uh, but you look in uh, the locations where the buildings came down, those lots are still filled. You can't rebuild until you can get the rubble out. You have to have somewhere to take the rubble. Uh, the government hasn't really designated uh, enough sites for that, so you have all kind of illegal dumping going on. Um, and heavy equipment obviously would be the most efficient way to remove the rubble, but uh, there's a program here that allows manual removal of the rubble in order to put money in Haitian people's hands so that they can buy food. When we look at the pictures that we've seen in the last few days on this one-year anniversary of the quake, you have to say to yourself, will these people be any better off in another year or two years or even five years from now? We see some signs of progress. Anecdotal for sure, but there are signs. Here's one sign. We visited one of the resettlement locations, one of the camps outside the city is called Canaan. Um, it initially was littered with a lot of tents. When we were there, we saw people actually building a concrete, Haitians building a concrete clinic. That's a sign that says that they know they can't come back here and so they're trying to start over again. The Haitian government, um, rightly or wrongly, last spring told humanitarian organizations to stop delivering food to the camps because it was destroying the Haitian agriculture economy. And so the humanitarian aid organizations had to switch to trying to provide people with money so that they could buy their food from the Haitian markets. That's sort of inefficient, but that's what's happening here. Um, it, it's, it's baffling and, and it's mind boggling the, the, the kinds of difficulties that Haitian people have to endure on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, Randall, last question. The spirit of the people does seem, in spite of all this, amazingly undaunted. Is that right? Resilience is a word you hear a lot about the Haitian people, and it is true. But underneath that resilience, there's a resignation. Um, it's as if they're looking at the future and they don't really see how they're going to make it. On the other hand, they have children. Uh, they have hope. And so, as one person put it, they don't have a choice. They have to get up and get on with their lives and face whatever confronts them. Haitian people have never had it easy. Uh, this, however, is probably the most difficult challenge that this nation has ever faced.